Hey, thank you for watching this video. There's more online at Embark Online. You can tweet me, and of course, here's the pie guy. All right, this is first grade, module six, lesson 12. And in this lesson, students are gonna be adding a pair of two digit numbers when the ones digits are, don't really require a whole lot of carrying into the tens place, although we, the uh, ones digits might add up to 10, all right? So technically that involves carrying. But this lesson, we're not really talking about the standard algorithm. At this point, I want you to resist um, teaching students the standard algorithm. Instead, remind students of all of the tools that they have in their toolkit. They know about quick tens. They know about number bonds. They know about decomposing things and adding the tens and adding the ones. They know about the place value chart. So we want students to continue using those techniques as inefficient as they are uh, to add and get our sums uh, because really what we're doing at this point is helping our students develop number sense and the difference between those digits, the tens place and the ones place and all that sort of stuff. Um, ultimately, students are going to learn the standard algorithm, but at this point, we just want to build uh, mathematical understanding. So let's get started. So the, a possible idea, it just came to me, uh, 23 plus 57, why don't you conduct a number talk? Just post this problem without the 80 up on your board, have your students sitting on the carpet and let them solve it in their head and just solicit a nice mathematical conversation and um, maybe I should say elicit, not solicit. <laughs> Get your students talking about the math in all the different ways that they could use to solve this problem. So some of the methods that students might use to solve this problem some students might say, well, I'm going to take the 23 plus the 57. I'm going to think of 23 as 20 and 3. I'm going to think of the 57 as 50 and 7. Then I'm going to add the 20 plus the 50 to get 70. I'm going to take the 3 plus the 7 and add 10. And now I'm going to add the 70 plus the 10 to get 80. All right. Um, there's one method that a student might use. Let's see, another method that a student might use to do 23 plus 57. Another student might say, well, I'm going to, uh, let's see, I'm going to decompose 57 to 50 and 7, and I'm going to take that 23, I'm going to add my 50, that gives me 73, then I'm going to take the 73 and I'm going to add in, so I just added in the 50, now I'm going to add in the remaining 7, and that gives me 80. That's another method that a student might use. Oh, let's see. Another place uh, method might be the place value chart. So a student might say, well, I'm going to take 23 plus 57, and I'm going to model that or represent it in a place value chart, 10s and 1s. And so 23 says I've got, let's see, two 10s three ones, and we're going to add in five tens. Well, if I'm going to add in five tens, instead of having two tens, I will now have seven tens. And now when it comes time to adding in the ones, instead of having three ones, I will now have ten ones. But using uh, the base 10 blocks as our mental model, these 10 ones can be cashed in to give us eight tens. And we'll have eight tens and no ones. Now, is that an efficient method? Absolutely not. But does this method demonstrate that the student truly has number sense? Absolutely. And that's what we're looking for, are methods that demonstrate that the students understand what these numbers mean. The efficiency of a standard algorithm will indeed come, but we need to make sure students have an understanding of the mathematics first. This whole page, pretty straightforward. Let your students choose a problem. And in fact, parents and teachers consider not assigning all of these problems for homework. Uh, 
but let's take a look at problem A. And the idea would be uh, let your students choose any method that they want to solve these problems. At this point, we're not looking for a particular method. So one method might be thinking of this as 20 and 2, and then doing 46 plus 20 gives us 66. So I just added the 46 and the 20. Then I'm going to take the 66 and I'm going to add in the 2, and that gives me 68. So our sum is 68. Oh, let's go to uh, something that requires real deep thinking. Oh, here, this one, question E. So another, this one, we might just say, okay, well, 45 is 40 and 5. 55 is 50 and 5. And then I might take the 40 and the 50 and say 40 plus 50 gives me 90. And then I can think of, so that's 40 and 50. And then I can think of the 5 and the 5, and I could say, well, 5 plus 5 equals 10. And then I could say, well, 90 plus 10 gives me 100. So there's our answer. Now, parents and teachers, I'm going to say it again. This is not the standard algorithm. It's kind of inefficient. But it's a great way to help students develop the number sense that we so desperately want them to have. Now here, we're going to specifically nudge our students towards using those number bonds. And I actually used number bonds on the last slide. So this slide is going to be kind of the same, uh, really. Uh, if we zoom in on problem C, let's say, we could say, well, let's leave the 31 the same. And we can think of 67 as 60 and 7. And now we can think of 31 plus 60. That gives us 91. Then we're going to take the 91. So we just added the 31 and the 60. We're going to add in that lonely leftover 7. And that gives us 98. And that is our answer right there. So this is one example of what we might be expecting. Now, parents and teachers, students may want to decompose the 31 instead of decomposing the 67. And that's perfectly fine. Uh, it does not matter which number they decompose. In fact, students can decompose both of the numbers and do just fine. For example, oh, let's do H. Students may decompose 47 to be 40 and 7, and they may decompose 53 to be 50 and 3, and then we can add the tens together, so that's going to be 40 plus 50. And remember, if you need to, say 4 tens plus 5 tens gives you 9 tens, or 90. And then we could add the ones 7 plus 3 gives us 10. And now we have 90 plus 10 equals 100. Woohoo! And a variety of different methods for how we can use number bonds. So even though students are specifically being asked to use number bonds, we still have a lot of choice that our students can have to solve these problems. And that wraps up first grade, module six, lesson 12. We're adding two two-digit numbers where one of the digits generally, the, the ones digits generally is going to be less than 10, although it might equal, those ones digits might equal 10. Hey, if these videos are helping you at all, please do me a favor. Go ahead and subscribe to my channel and consider telling a friend.